Okay, we have the pleasure of hearing from two speakers today. Our first one will be Mr. Ken Barton, and his title is, Do We Really? And then after that, Mr. Mark McGarvey will come after Ken, and his title is, God Gives Us What We Need. So is it working? There we go. Turn these down, because otherwise I think I'm speaking plenty loud and you guys won't be hearing me at all. <clears throat> Do we really? I've been thinking a, a lot lately about believing God. Not in God. Is he real? Yeah, he's real. But believing God. Here's what I'm talking about. When I read the Bible... I am reading what I believe to be the history of what has happened since the beginning of creation. Since before then, actually, <clears throat> because I find in Proverbs 8.23 where wisdom says, I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning before there was ever an earth. I am convinced that we as children of God should always be praising God for our salvation, especially since there are verses that speak to God deciding to send Jesus to earth to save us even before there was an earth. You can find this in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, verses 3 and 4. In the New King James Version, what I'm reading Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This is what is told in Colossians about Jesus. Colossians uh, Chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. <clears throat> and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So here's what I'm asking each of us to consider today. Is the Bible true? To me, this is a very important question, because if you don't believe that the Bible is true, you're pretty much shut down from the beginning, aren't you? Here's another question I believe needs settled. Are we believing the scriptures? And if not, then why not? And what is the result when we don't? We limit God and we bring judgment upon ourselves when we don't believe God. By that I mean that we limit our faith in God and that limits what he can do for us. <clears throat> Who are you going to believe, me or your lion eyes, right? God would have delivered the promised land to them exactly as he had promised except for one thing, if only they would believed him. But they believed their lying eyes. Check it out in Numbers 13, 14. Pretty good couple of chapters. That cost them an entire generation of people. Everyone 20 years old and above. And 40 years in time. If you were 19 years old, you wouldn't enter the promised land until you were 59. If your baby was born on that day, that child would be 40 years old when entering the promised land. Here's what unbelief cost Jesus' neighbors in Nazareth. In Matthew 13, when Jesus' ministry was very strong and many were being healed, he visited his hometown of Nazareth. While he was there, he taught in their synagogue, and they were so amazed, but not in a good way. Here's what happened, Matthew 13, 54. 
When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers, James, Joseph, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. He was on a roll, folks. He was healing people that had been blind all their life, lame all their life, dead. And they didn't, he didn't look right to them. He looks just like us. He came from here. Can't fix stupid sometimes. <clears throat> So here it is in Mark chapter 6, starting in verse 5. And now, he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. So the result, they disbelieved themselves right out of God's blessing. <clears throat> and Jesus just went elsewhere. You don't want God around you, it's not going to be a problem. God's got people that want him around. <clears throat> I want to always believe God. So here's question, question here. Did God, Jesus, make man? The answer here is yes. Okay. When did God make man? Sixth day, right? <clears throat> when God was finished making him, okay. How old was Adam? <laughs> was he a baby, a teenager, an adult, an old man? See, people don't have a problem, though, with the idea that God made Adam a completely fully grown man, okay. Then breathed life, breathed life into him, okay. And it's my understanding that Adam conversed with God, right? So he knew how to, he knew a language. He didn't have to be taught. God instilled that in him. <clears throat> it was a fully functional and knowledgeable brain. That understanding comes from the fact that according to scriptures, he and God communicated, and Adam was intelligent enough to be able to decide what to call the different animals. Kind of hard to do if you didn't have a functional brain, wouldn't it? So also that Adam knew what to do when they had given, he had been given the task to tend the garden. He knew how to use tools, knew what to do. There are many who have a problem with the idea that the earth, along with the rest of our universe, was created in one day. Why? Because in their minds, the only way for the earth to be made was through millions of years of things happening. Then throw in all the universes, a.k.a. the heavens, and the wheels definitely fall off. Brings to my mind that line of Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth. Some would probably ask where I get all this from, and here's... Here's where I found it cleverly hidden in the first five verses of the Bible, Genesis 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven, heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day 
That pretty much puts it into perspective. It was the first day. Here's where I get my conviction to continue in my belief. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I ain't there yet. I'm not saying I'm complete, but I'm going to the source and I'm getting there. Okay? What is my goal here? It's to encourage us to read and believe God's word. Because that is how Jesus answered Satan's temptations, isn't it? With the written word of God. Matthew 4, 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I'm certain that that belief, or lack of it, will make all the difference in how everything turns out for each one of us.